Greetings, family. We are back for round three, and we are playing an interesting game called What's in the Box, mostly because I keep walking past this box, and I really want to know what's in it. Now, there are other boxes in the hallway that I'm equally curious about, but the big black one I am feeling is going to tell some interesting stories. So, playing our first round of Master Ranke and... What's in the box? So this box contains tools of the work, tools of my trade. This is the way it's packed for storage, which also means that everything in it has been sanitized and is prepared for use from the get-go. So if it comes out of the box, when I'm in session, it doesn't go back in the box until it's been taken care of. Safety first. I've never had a problem playing and working with a person who had HIV because protocol taught me early on from experience said everything needed to be taken care of to make sure that everybody was safe. It's my responsibility. So the first layer of the box is actually the top of the box itself. Flashlights, because you need light and most dungeons do not have adequate lighting. Okay. I've got to be able to see a wound to treat the wound. The other side is more for my fun. Remember, every set tool that I have in this box has a specific purpose. And all of it is to get up in the brain of the person that I'm working with and manipulate the chemistry to create the sensations and the experience that I want them to have. A lot of people, really don't like clothes pins, but they're not really in and of themselves all that severe, shall we say. They don't cause a lot of concern until you attach the clothes pin to a body part. And then you start adding weight. Nope. I got 20, so I got it. Anyway, you get the idea. What is that, sir, shot? This is a one ounce fishing weight. Okay. I can hang about a pound of weight off of one of these clothes pins. Changes the sensation just a little bit. Very sharp. Can be painful. Duh. But that's not the fun part. If you leave it on for a while, Eventually, the sensation that was created initially starts to dull. Yes. Something about going numb. People can tolerate it. So you take the clothespin off. And then you stimulate it in various ways. I used to like to hang clothespins off nipples and wait until the bottom wasn't squirming anymore. And then suck on the The level of sensation created by the human tongue while the blood's flowing back in is quite exquisite and affects the brain chemistry quite a bit. The endorphins that get produced mm -hmm. are huge. Obviously, the ubiquitous 
dragon clamps, right? Which are always fun because then I can hang a whole bunch of weight off of them. And the more weight I put on them, more secure. The it's a security thing. Sir. Tighter they squeeze. Security. And because I do enjoy certain restrictive play, I always keep a chain collar around because I do sometimes get a little close on the neck. You got to be careful where you put it. You got to think about how much pressure you're putting. Sure, but yeah. Just the sensation of the contact, even if you're not actually cutting off the breath, creates fear. Yeah. Fear is a fun place to play. I enjoy walking into fear. If you can convince somebody that you're going to do something that they know you should not do, it puts their mind in a really fun place. Like I said, you take them to the edge, you get hold of them, and you stick them out over the chasm and convince them that you're going to let go. See, in my world back in the 70s, the follow-up to that was you simply relax because if I'm dangling over the edge, you will probably let go, and I know there's a net there. <laughs> no, I'm not going to give you the net. If I let go, I mean it. <laughs> Different perspective, sir. Like I said, we would just relax into it. Because, yeah, well, you know, there's, there's most people there. don't have that much self control. That isn't control, that's trust. Most people don't have that much trust either. Serious. You can bypass the trust and the control if you create the right circumstances if you use the right amount of stimulus at the right time in the right order you can get the brain past the part that's logical if you know you're going to fall sit back and it relax and enjoy the ride okay so here's the thing with that a little bit of brain science involved here PET scans of the human brain show that when you're calm, relaxed, and not in fear, the blood flow to your brain is around the outer cortex. Okay. That's the logical brain. If you can induce fear, the blood will flee from the outer cortex to the center of the brain which is the lizard brain, which is where the fight or flight reflex lives. And there is no logic there. When you know the person you're working with, you can put them in that state and have fun with it there. There is no trust. There is no control. There's only fear. I'm willing to say there is no control. That whole trust thing? No. Relax and the trust relax. is in entering the scene. But when you remove the blood from that part of the brain that's capable of reason, reason no longer occurs. Only fight Agreed. or flight reaction occurs. And it's interesting to tinker with the human brain when you get a person there. Okay. So the next layer in this particular box is generally equipped Jesus. for first aid. Now that's a kid. We do dangerous things. We damn well better have the tools we need to fix it. Now there are a couple things that I use on occasion for something besides fixing. A vascular clamp does wonders on nipples and clits. Um, yes. Um, and the treading, which is intended to keep the vein or the artery from slipping out, mm -hmm. adds some interesting contours to the sensation it's creating. 
12. Yeah. Would you like the a small demo of it? It's all right, sir. <laughs> I do keep some things in here that most people wouldn't think of. Glucose tablets. It's for diabetic? No. The amount of energy that a bottom who is being taken to extremes expend sometimes requires glucose sure. to recover from. Sure. Okay. So I always keep glucose tablets because if I see the shock reaction starting to happen, I can pop a couple of these in their mouth and start you know, reducing the reaction with the sugar. You know, we have skin cleaner and Provodyne solution and glycerin for when you need things to be slippery. Sometimes that happens. Peppermint oil. Uh, on a cotton swab? On a little cotton swab. In tender places. Very much safer than a heating oil like cinnamon because it'll feel like it's going to burn you, but it won't burn you. Wintergreen. Put it on, let it sit for a little, build the sensation, then blow on it. And when you put it in the tender places, it's entertaining to see the reaction. That's politely phrased, actually. Yes. It's, it's a fun place to be. But this is the base standard first aid kit that I carry. I carry surgical dressings. Okay, I carry That's tape, kit. bandages, all of that. In the other box, I have a suture kit and sutures in the event that I cause a cut with a single tail that's deeper than it should be, I can repair it. But I can also use the sutures for other things. But you also know what you're doing with them. You've got to practice, learn how. Once you know how, you can do. The reality is I really don't want to have to take somebody to a hospital if there's been an accident because that doesn't reflect well on our community. So it's my job if I'm gonna take that risk to know how to fix it. Okay. What's that? What's it look like to you? Oh, the vampire's enemy. Well, it's barbecue skewer. For Hibachi barbecue. Enemy. What's really fun with it is the point because you can use that point for all kinds of interesting stimulation in delicate places. Or not, I still have memories, but that's okay. Yeah, well, you know, or, the other thing not. is you can... That's the nice stuff. That, that's, <laughs> yeah, that, no, it's the point, so I, I still have memories. So first aid kit. And always present nice. nice tape you know everything that you need to be able to treat a wound whether it's accidentally or intentionally inflicted you've got to be able to do something with it um i have alcohol swabs not in fact for pleasure or fixing things but when you leave little nicks in the back with your signal tail lip mm -hmm. it's fun to wipe them down with alcohol First aid. You know, it's not first aid. It's deliberate torture. If I'm not going to lick the blood off and I want the continued sensation, I use alcohol swaps. I also have in, I have another first aid box that I didn't bring because it's a, a true first aid box. I don't use alcohol swaps in my real first aid box. Hmm, why? Because alcohol doesn't actually kill germs for about 30 seconds. Yeah, true. Okay. 
what I use is chlorhexidine swabs, which is an instant kill on 99.9% .9 of all bacteria and virus. And it's tissue safe, causes no damage to the okay. tissues, alcohol, peroxide, or caustic even agents. Betadine, to some even extent. betadine is a caustic yeah. agent. It hurts. Okay. It's causing some level of tissue damage. Chlorhexidine is a surgical scrub. Safe for humans. I buy it by the gallon at tractor supply because I've got horses yeah. and you need to wash wounds with horses. But I keep chlorhexidine swabs in my first aid kit because I can clean a wound without causing the person pain. Good information. Good information. So my, my first aid kit at home is more extensive than this. Surprise? Not really. <clears throat> the next level is the continuation of various sensation. <clears throat> Practical things are for pulling pork. Or picking your turkey up. Yes. Or picking up a breast. And jiggling it a little bit. Or, you know, helping a person scratch their back. Yes. Very good for an inch. Very good. Yeah. The most dangerous aisle in a grocery market for a sadist is the cooking implement aisle. I love this because on one side it's curved, so there's literally no wind resistance when it makes impact. On the other side, it's cupped, so there's a lot, and there's a completely different sensation. You're not a well man. No, I'm not. Okay. I never claimed it. I was, did I? Just thought I'd mention that. A leather paint stirrer. I was about to say a very innocent implement. Innocent looking implement. One side has sandpaper on it. Oh. So you cool. can smack in it, you know, something with it on the smooth side or the rough side if you want. But then you can very focusedly put friction on those interesting little tinder bits. I'm a big fan of cockheads and nipples with this. Every so often, I really like to scare the fuck out of somebody. Flash cock. It's really fun stuff. Magicians use it all the time. Ah, uh, yeah. And it really doesn't cause any damage, but it will scare the fuck out of somebody when you wrap it around their cock and then set it off. <laughs> a little bit of snake bite. Snake bite just kit. In case there's good a snake in the playroom. No, good suction. There might be a snake in the playroom. Yeah, but you can use the suction on the tinder bits. A measuring spoon? No, a melon baller. Never mind. Didn't see the points. Well, you know, I am a sadist. Ridiculous. Another set of nickel points because I like nickels. They're fun. It's supposed to be a nipple vibrator. Yes. Much better on the clit. And and the clamp is stout. So it has a dual purpose. Mouse trap. Mm -hmm. The surprise is just ever so much worth the fun.
blindfold, leather straps, the other nipple vibrator. Right. Good to have two. Huh? Always good to have two. Yeah. Metal or? Metal. Brass. It's entertaining. Another set of dragon plants for when I get bored. Now we get to a part of the collection. When I was first starting out, I kept running into a number of spanking bottoms. So when I was first learning to braid whips, because I actually braided whips and sold them for a while. I made a leather pad. Nice handle. Problem is, it's a little bit too floppy, so you can't get very much on it. But it weighs enough. Nice handle. That there's a surprise in the amount of thump that you get. The handle braiding is beautiful. Thank you. When I was learning to do this, I, I lived in Bakersfield and Metz, who is a pretty well known whip maker now, yeah. was learning her craft as well. We learned how to do the braiding for handles and such with each other. Gorgeous handle. Two sizes of oak paddles. Beginner and advanced, or beginner and advanced, depending, right? With holes to reduce friction. Or create blisters, depending. No, if you, if you, this one might because the holes are more sharp edged. This one won't because the holes have been routed so that there's a radius on them. And I can do a full arm swing with this one and not raise a blister. But you would raise a bottom. Oh, yeah. About a foot off the ground. <laughs> yeah, I was thinking about it. Yeah. I, I, I was thinking about it. And I have. This, this is one of my previous partner's favorite paddle. Who made the paddle? This one was made by her ex-husband. She gave it to me. No, no, okay. Right. Because he was into woodwork, but he wasn't into SM. But he made her this paddle. That's a waste. Yeah. This one, I don't remember. I think a friend of mine made it. But the spanking bottoms, they all have their standards for how much impact and how much staying and how many times. And basically, you're being a service top and you're working with a spanking bottom because they're very specific and you only do what they want you to do. You only touch the word they want you to touch them. And, and, and. not my cup of tea. I got over that pretty quick allowed for no creativity in the brain. I like using sensations to get people going. One good back with this will kick off an endorphin rush that I can work with for a long time with something else and keep going. And I've been, the woman who gave this to me, she was my Second slave. And I used this until she orgasmed on multiple occasions. Once on the stage of the San Francisco Eagle, where somebody bid a hundred bucks to see me do it in front of everybody. And we had a witness on the stage 
who actually watched her coochie to see that she actually came. She was most masochistic. In fact, she had an orgasm the day that she tripped in the garage and twisted her ankle. From okay. twisting her ankle. Just, just thinking about that made me blow my mind. Yeah. So, all of, all of these whips are Mets whips, the, the floggers and cats and flat braided cats and such. They're all custom to my hand. It's not a standard handle. And I've got the only set of whips that have this particular pattern of skin on the handle. Mets never did these for anyone else. The first set of whips she made me, I only had five. I had three floggers, and one in each weight, a flat braided cat, a round braided cat. Somebody stole those out of my truck. When the insurance claim came in for the price of the whips, Mets gave me a deal, made me a set of whips that span five leathers. This happens to be the bullhide cat. Quite fun. <clears throat> then we get into Floggers. Each leather, Just there's three weighted, three different weights of how much and how long. Like I said, the handles are all custom to my hand. And Very all of them are MRK and the number of the whip. Oh, okay. I was wondering if it was a year. No. Mets made these all for me in 91. 1991. But it goes on and on with. And you can match numbers to, to, to get the leathers for the whip. All the, you know, it's one through five for the first letter, six through 10 for the next, so on. We had the thin, this thin leather is a boot leather or a shoe leather. Okay. They've been sitting for a while, so they need to be cleaned and re moistened and conditioned and all that. Without and then some boot blacks. But you can, not a lot of thump, whole lot of sting. Okay. Flat braided cat in the same leather. Mm, I'm just smelling. Okay. I'm just smelling. Oh, pretty. This is what I warm up with usually. Pretty. I want to abrade the surface of the skin, start getting some of that blood flowing to prepare the surface area for some more serious work. This one actually has MRK. This is whip number 21, and it's got Messi's signature in it. Hide. Definitely going to have a few blue blacks having a field day with these. Yeah. I love that braid. The braid on that handle is just spectacular. Yeah. Mets develop an amazing um, braid for her knots. It's her just ending. gorgeous. And she did an amazing job of getting the seam straight, which is kind of unique to her. 
If she was still making lips, I'd tell people to buy lips from her. She's not making lips anymore. No, She's got hasn't arthritis. In, uh, her, Jay Marston, um, not Ruth, but another one. I can't remember. Her, Jay Marston, and that wonderful child, but also another one that went to Australia, all have arthritis. Yep. Um, this is a heavier boot leather. It's not quite as smooth as the other leather, so it's a little more thumb. Just a little less thing. It's in obviously in three weights in the floggers. So that there's a real lightweight one, there's a medium, and then there's a heavy. And you gotta keep your eye on where you're throwing it because the tails are different lengths. And if you stand in the same place and throw it, oops, you're gonna get wrapped and you're gonna hurt somebody. This one is elk hide. It's soft and thumpy, but not so much stingy. If you understand or you, you know, the sensation that you're creating, you can take people to interesting places based on which implement you choose, how many times you apply it, how thorough you are with your coverage, the directionals, how you stroke, you know, mix it up really nicely and it creates the most amazing sets of sensations that you can imagine. Having a full range of tools, especially of the quality that METS produced, you know, if you try and hold the handle, it probably won't fit very well. Oh, good Lord. Okay. That handle is specific to my hand. It's not a, it, it's a custom handle. We went through, I don't know how many dials to find the right size for comfort for my hand to allow me to work in an extensive way. Because although you are much, much wider than mine, you are not that much longer yeah, but than mine. My hands You've are got a width on you that is scary. Yeah, and and I'm really strong in my hands. That's a given. You've shown horse. you've shot horses. Of course you're strong in your hands. Yeah, but this was before I ever touched a horse. This was in my quote unquote youth. And the reason that this handle feels so good to me is it's the same size handle as a mop. Is was on the professional janitorial mop that, that I sold for that. my father for four years, when I, from eight until 12. Thought you were so the that. strength in my hands comes from mopping with this size, so I can hold on to these like nobody's business. It's like nothing to me. Okay? It feels good in my hand. Okay? Most people don't like that big a handle. And all of these whips, when they're properly treated, are weighted perfectly. perfectly. And I help Mets find the shot that she puts in the handle to get the weight right. See, when they make shot, the way they make shot is they drop molten lead from a very high old fashioned point. shot towers and shot the towers. water. Number 12 shot, I forget the exact numbers, but this is an, is an example of it. One square foot of number 12 shot weighs let's say 250 pounds okay. yeah it's it's heavy it's lead square foot of it you know pretty heavy the stuff that i helped mets find that i used in my whips that i gave to another single tail whip maker who used to work for david morgan Another wonderful whip maker who lost his hands. And died because of diabetes. Yeah. 
and I have one. I, I have a very special one of his works. I'll be showing you shortly. Um, that weighs something like 450 a square foot. Because what it is, is the leavings. When the shot's falling, some of it's too big, which they can actually size up to the larger shot size, okay? Some of it's too small. It's like mm -hmm. dust. It's that dust leaving that weighs so much. And the reason that I started buying that for my stuff was because they wouldn't sell number 12 anymore because they couldn't make enough of it for all the bird shot that they needed because 22 bird shot is number 12 shot. Oh, okay. Okay. They couldn't produce enough for the bird shot shells that they were making. But they were more than willing to sell the leavings because they didn't have to make it again or you know melt it again and yeah. so forth. And I got it for less than it would have cost me for a rounded bird shot. The fun part is it packs denser and it's more supple in a whip. Yeah, the denser pack, definitely. Okay. Yep. So big whips, all right? It's a full match set, 25 whips, original. Somebody stole one of them at a dungeon while I was working with somebody. So I've got one whip missing out of the set. If anybody sees a whip that looks like this, maybe they should probably let us know so that we yeah. can retrieve the whip from the person that stole it. Be aware, good listeners. Please be aware. Oh. It's cute. Yeah, it is until I take back and wrap it around your nipple. It's still cute. But it's fun and it's kind of cool to be able to work on the small bits with it. Although the girl that I got that paddle from, I worked on at Threshold one time on her back and between her legs for about an hour with the full-size floggers. She was in heaven. What can I say? I live to please. Her name wouldn't have been Sandy, would it? No, Christine. Very interesting lady, of course. This is a little shits and giggles tickle thing. That's not a mess. No, I'm just trying to figure out if this handle is carved what? It's a, I don't know. But one of the girls I was working with one night decided she wanted to get me a gift after the show, so to speak, and bought that. So I've just kind of kept it at the bottom of the kit and Said, okay, we'll work with that. Box number two and three coming up. Pilot wand. I will keep that away from my spouse and remind her that it is property of the library. <laughs> well, every once in a while with Jill, I have to get for I can. Until she says, but you're going to do it. <laughs> Every once in a when it comes to the library, <laughs> this is the only time I get fully wet. This is the only time you win? Yeah. Wow. Sorry, Jill, it's the property of the library. I have a treasure, treasure, so this one doesn't treasure. have as much stuff, but it does have another flashlight. Always good. Those that are ticklish. It, it gets in their head. You know, I 
funny, more years ago now than I can remember, I was doing a workshop with Victoria Gaten and Catherine Gross. And we were talking about things that were dangerous to the point of possibly being like life threatening. And I produced a feather duster and people went, you get busy. I said, uh, what happens if you're ticklish and asthmatic? You better be asking the right questions. Yeah, definitely. Sterile suture kit. Yes, indeed. Of course, this is also the piercing tray. So I've got all kinds of Stuff. interesting, fun Stuff. toys. I've got a couple of different styles of sutures. And for those of you that wonder what you do with sutures, besides sew up wounds, it's amazing what pussies look like when they're completely sewed shut. Sew things together, let's see, foreskin. Foreskins, that kind of stuff. Yeah. Alcohol pads, of course. Lots and lots of needles because I really, really enjoy piercing. Patterns are wonderful things, and I make a lot of them. Through four boxes of 50 on one girl one time. She liked piercing, so did I. We had fun. See, I'm just having visions of pretty colored twine. Attached a on. much lighter weight. Yeah. This is a teaser. Oh, I'm going to hit you with a cat. Oh. And I pick up a real cat. Not so much. The ubiquitous cuffs. This looks like old pleasure kits. No, not quite. No, no, no. These were not quite. They look like old These pleasure kits. These are Mr. S cuffs, if I recall. Either Mr. S or Leather Masters. I'm not sure which. That'll wake you up. The scourge. That'll wake you up. And there's the balance. Basically, it's right at the knot when it's properly conditioned and ready for use. It's balanced perfectly right there. I've got a couple of blue plaques. We're going to have a field day. And it took Mets a long time to figure out how she was going to do this one. This is MRK P01 Punisher. Okay. Zero one. Just wondering about the P. And yes, I have used it in the dungeon. And yes, the impact is significant. Not too many bottoms that I ever worked with could go anywhere with this one. Got it. But it's fun to hang on the wall and say, it could be nice. <laughs> Which is one of the things that we will be doing <laughs> when we use one of my <laughs> leather paddles. I made that one. It's just damn good. See, weight is wonderful, but the braiding is just so awesome that I can't help but look at it. What's nice about that one is one side will leave the tread mark from the edge braid. The other side won't. The braiding is just so damn good. So this whip means a lot to me. This is the only whip of its kind in existence. Who's the maker? David? The young man that used to work for Morgan. Yeah. 
that is no longer with us. The reason this is the only one of its kind is if you count the plats, this is not an eight plat, which is what most signal books are. This is a 16. 16? He never made that for anyone else. David was my first, David Morgan was my first bookmaker. The man who taught me. No, this me. is not David Morgan. This is one of the guys that learned from him. Yeah. That left. Morgan. There were a couple of them. Uh, one stayed until he sold the company. David made my instructor's whips, which were um, balanced signal whips. Yeah. And he also made the 18 inch rigid shack target whip, whip for Tony. Yeah, it, basically it's a stock whip. Yeah, but it doesn't have the swivel head. It's 18 inch rigid shaft that then goes into the bull whip. The, the then it's bull a full bull whip. It doesn't mind. It's got an 18 inch Handle. rigid shaft. Yeah. He called them tar um yeah, target it's, whips. The by the nomenclature of whip makers, it's a bull whip. And uh Tony used it in his bullwhip axe for the longest time. But this one is when it's completely conditioned and, and supple, I can roll it into a ball like this and stick it in my pocket. Oh. And I can take it out in the middle of a scene without anybody seeing it. And the first time it cracks. Okay. So there's a story with this one too. This was my birthday present, one of my birthday presents for Christine. Okay. We met this gentleman, or I met him online. We exchanged a lot of mail about whip making and how to pull and knots and all that stuff. He couldn't find good shot, couldn't get number 12. Okay. So I arranged to meet him in Chicago. And I think it was one of the IMLs. You know, while IML was in town. And I gave him half a box of that really fine shot and said, here, try this. He made this with that shot. So after I practiced with Lou, we got really good understanding distances and how it flew and all of that. Christine and I went to San Diego for a weather show, went to the dungeon. And we ended up, they had set up a double St. Andrew's cross. Mm -hmm. I put Christine on one side and Guy Baldwin put his boy on the other. And they couldn't tell whose whip was cracking. They were jumping all over the damn place with both of us working on them at the same time. So they would hear the crack and think it was a miss, but it was the other person getting it. And then they'd get theirs, and the other person would think that it was a miss. So the anticipation that built between the two of them was quite glorious. <laughs> it was fun. So this is one of mine. Wheeler. Was it Joseph Wheeler? Yeah. Thank you. I knew if I thought about that long enough, I'd remember. So quartz. Most well, people really snakes all over the place. don't like these at all. That just snakes all over the place. Right? Well, feel the weight of this one. I've lifted babies that weigh less than this. Yeah. Now, you think what about is this, that. About nine pounds? Eight yeah, pounds? Something like that. Think about all that snaking. Right, and how much energy flows down that handle? I've lifted into children that weigh less. Tails, 
okay, when you flick it. Like I said, babies. Yeah. And all that energy ends up down here. Yeah. So <laughs> you've got a particularly stubborn situation that you need to convince. That's, stubborn situation. That is so politely put. That's the heavy one. I made these. These are mine. I used to sell these. These are the next two down. Okay, not a well man. <laughs> you're not a well woman <laughs> I, I have no idea what you're talking about kind of a teaser quirk in the lightweight variety stiff handle you know flat braid not that much but it's a good teaser Yeah, I've got a couple of blue blacks who are falling in love and they don't even know it. So <clears throat> now I've used this on a few people. The fuck? This is a surgical clamp. For what? An octopus? No. When they're doing stuff in the abdomen, sometimes they need somebody to be able to hold something back and they stick this in, clamp it, and then the nurse behind them can hold back the tissue. Or in the next room. Yeah, well, you know, the fun thing is though, like I said, or in the it next holds room. on and peel away. There is very little to it, all things considered. But it weighs a whole lot more than a short, sur little surgical clamp. I have never seen anything this long. Yeah, well, I, I've been known to hang that off of a couple of people's genitals. You are not while I'm working on them. So it's swinging the whole time and bumping up against the ground or their legs or not. And the unpredictability of the sensation will take them out of that space that you call control. My goal is to assert my dominance over their brain. I want them to feel what I want them to feel when I want them to feel it, the way I want them to feel it, to experience that sensation the way I have chosen for them to experience it. All of those tools are part of what gets in there. I have a very evil mind. It's carbon fiber. If you take the violet wand and put the pad in your pants, when you touch somebody with it, it conducts electricity. It's weighted at the end with brass, so it has some thump. I'm so glad Jill isn't here. What she doesn't know won't work. So they Poor get Bobby. thump and shock at the same time. What Jill doesn't, what Jill doesn't know won't hurt me. Yeah, or well, your problem is she can watch the video too. So you're kind of fucked. <laughs> um, this doesn't seem like much. Makes a lot of noise. Yeah. But you hit it, somebody it enough times. a little bit of a, yes. It, it has it. Another one of these in the lighter oh, weight. Pretty. Okay. Something about horse hair just tickles me. Yeah, me too. Until I swing it at you. So this is the reason you're actually raising horses, just for the tails? No. <laughs> I don't raise horses, I ride horses. 
God forbid I started reading. I'm poor enough as it is. I don't need to be that poor. Yes, indeed. The bug zapper. This is all kinds of fun. For me. And thank you. I, I was waiting for you to clean that up. Okay. The battery's dead. This is a Betty Crocker whisk. Mix, mixer. Mixer. Yes. The little, when it spins, this spreads. So you hit the button and you can put it up close to the body in interesting places. And it just. Never thought about that one. Over and over and over and over again. They're fairly decent for making a little shake, which is yeah. the only way I've thought of them. Or beating before. eggs for scrambled eggs yeah. or whatever. But they're also good for tenderizing nipples and clits and cockheads and balls and such. Yeah. In case you have to buy this again. No. That's my best lie on short notice. Fire play is fun. Something's gotta be able gotta to go light with the cotton. Gotta, with the flash cotton. Yeah. Or the candles that I usually have around because I do like to throw hot wax on people unexpectedly. I would just think it's the practical thing for a cigar, sir. No, I have a better solution for that. Yeah, it was my best lie on short notice. Classic wheel. Classic wheel. Nice stainless steel. Also works well when you're wearing the pad and the violet wand. Because then all of the sparks and the energy is focused really finely at the point. Yeah, it doesn't seem this one. <laughs> this is the rod from hell. Nylon rod. Really whippy. Things like a holy motherfucker. What was this originally? Uh, two pieces of nylon. That's it? Put together. Okay. But just asking. Really, really fun for the lightweight, just I want to sting you, but I don't want to thump you. Okay. Because. Yeah, that. Mm-hmm. Looks like Baskerville's old curry combs. Looks like one of my puppy's combs. Fill the points. Yeah, looks like one of my puppy's combs. Look at how I used to de-hat that's, him. That's a fun tool. To I never thought about that. Hmm. Hmm. Can you do it? Mm-hmm. I think this was in there. I meant to keep them. I'm, I'm, I'm taking this home with me. I was about to say, it's also a wonderful thing to relax with. Yes, it is. Yeah. That's why I'm taking it home with me. <laughs> mm-hmm. More clothespins, only on a string. So that you can remove them. Uh, Zippity doo dah, as they used to say in the old yes. country. And a whole bag of them. Some assortment of this black oh, rope. Good to have rope. The feather dust that you mentioned. Because a person who's ticklish is ever so much fun to play with. Pink? Of course. Yes. The sisters would approve. That's all I'm saying. Just yes. The, sir. the sisters would approve. Would don't you agree? Yeah. In fact, they would laugh their ass off. Yes. It's pink. Always good. And I actually have the filter in case you actually need a real freaking gas mask because somebody's being really stupid. This one was fun because this little hole I could just put my finger over 
possibly was uh, mummified. And it could create some interesting sense of panic. Yeah. And when you've got them and have had them in mummification with saran wrap for mm, two or three hours, if you wrap them correctly, you can make one slice from the crotch down to their feet and spread their legs, but they still don't get the direct contact of skin because you wrap each leg separately. Hmm. So literally the only part of their body that they can get any sensation on at all is their crotch. That focuses all of that sensation right there the tiniest little flick with anything will cause some amazing amounts of sensation. It's been known to cause more than one orgasm at a time. So if your goal is multiple orgasms or to create the experience of a multiple orgasm, thumbs up. I'm good with that. So that's that box. Back. Man with a map case is an interesting man. This is not a map case. This what is was a the original? Map rod shaggy rod. set of cups because cupping mm. tenderizes the flesh nicely and sets it up for all kinds of interesting sensations. With also very helpful. Well, we could debate that, but it depends on where you put the cup. So, <clears throat> unusual collection of canes. Uh -huh. All sorts of ways up in here. So, probably my favorite. You know, I'm tired of you fucking with me. Light and simple. Yeah. With, with a ball on the end of it. This is a fiberglass antenna off of my old Camaro. Somebody broke it. And I picked it up and I went, hmm. And then I tried it out and I went, ah. I can use this to create interesting little sensation with very fine pinpoint marks with that little ball yeah. that's on the end. So in this set of canes is something special. A friend by the name of Duncan lived in San Francisco. This is a World War One swagger stick? Officer's swagger stick. Thought so. And how wide it is is incredibly deceptive. I have a picture that I'm going to give you of one stroke. Uh huh. So one of my friends, Jerry Setti, made a mixed set of canes for me because he knows how much I like canes okay. and three different weights. 
Peter. Feather light. Yeah, until they touch you. The diameter of the cane delivers a different level of sensation. For those people that like really. Oh, see, I, was, I was thinking of net, some of Nan Burroughs old games. Um, maybe these. Oh, she had some going back to the 60s. But oh. anyway, so I collect these are fabulous. another set in three weights. Three diameters. I have multiple sets of the same sizes because you know it's not unusual for somebody to ask me what this feels like when I've been working with somebody and they've observed, so I can demo. This is just an old fashioned oak rod. The reason it's in here, and there is usually multiples, is because it will shatter. Yeah. So it's always fun to create a certain amount of distress by breaking one on the you bottom. You broke my cane. And you broke my cane. <laughs> you broke <laughs> my cane. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And trust me, I can get the menace in it. To, to create, you know, a certain amount of distress. Occasionally, I run across somebody who's very heavy caning bottom, who likes thump. That's what you're calling this, just thump? Oh, yeah. Believe it or not, the diameter distributes enough of the force that it's not so much sting as it is Oh, I understand basic thump, but I, uh, no, this is more wallop. It's thump. Tomato, tomato. No. I've tried these on myself. Wallop? I know the difference. That's thump, not so much sting. Oh, wow. This one's kind That's of. That's thump. Halfway. This could be used as a wiffle ball bat. Okay. Well, you know, some bottoms, you got to apply a little bit extra stuff to it to get to their brain. No arguments. It works. It's, it's an additional set of sensation that you can create Agreed. to get them over the hump. So Agreed. those are the tools of my work. I have experienced the sensation from every one of those tools. Understood. I understand what that sensation feels like. And because I've got experience, training, yeah. been able to have senior bottoms who could tell me what they were experiencing, I understand what's going to go on in the person who's receiving it yeah. their head if you're going to play on the edge you're going to walk that line you better know exactly what you're applying there's it, it, it's not even there's nothing here except for the single tail okay that can cause significant physical damage yeah. Even if I hit somebody right over a kidney with a cat, I might possibly cause some bruising to the kidney, but it's not life-threatening. You miss with a single tail, you can cut a carotid artery in a heartbeat. Amen. Right? And I do play on the front side with single tails. The work is is ever so exquisite when you actually connect with the nipple or the head of a cock. It's fun. Licking the blood off later, if you are partnered with the bottom, is even more fun. 
but it's about experiencing them. The stuff that, that Mets made, I had Mets apply to me so that I understood I could calibrate sensation. Yeah, point well made, point well made. These are the tools of our work. The subject of our work is the human mind. There is a place that you don't go very often with bottoms because there's not very many bottoms that are physically and psychologically capable of going there. But there is a place where the only thing that the bottom is experiencing while the work is occurring is agony. There is no thought. There is no awareness. There's just agony. It's a fun place to go if you're working with somebody who's capable of taking it. Yeah. Who you have that much trust in. But therein also is the monster. I can take any human to that place and keep them there for as long as I want to. That is not safe. That is not healthy. It's dangerous. If you're an actual sadist, not just somebody who's acting like you're a sadist, you have a natural desire to go there. You had damn well better know yourself well enough that you know you keep the chain on that monster. Because we come back to where we began, yeah, which is mastery of self first. Yeah, safety is the domain of the dominant partner in whatever work is occurring. It's your responsibility, it's your obligation. You bring them in, you got to bring them out, and you better bring them out whole. It's unlikely that most people, unless they're completely incompetent and stupid, are going to be able to use an implement other than a single tail and kill somebody. If it's being applied somewhat correctly. I like the qualifier on that. Okay. A single tail, if I'm throwing at a nipple and I'm off by a foot, I can cut a carotid artery. I can yeah. blind a person and cut their dick off. Or put out an eye. Or put out an eye. It's an easy tool to use and cause significant physical damage, including a fatality. It's a part of our natural process of sadists to want to cause extreme discomfort. Controllable. Yeah. That's the safe part. The controlled is the safe part. The natural tendency for most sadists is, in fact, to not control it. It's part of our demon that we play with inside ourselves all the time. The line that we dare not ever cross because once we do, we ain't ever coming back. Those people that killed that woman in Tennessee, they went over that line and engaged in behavior that normally would have been reasonably safe, but they kept doing it for too long because they were enjoying it. Yeah. And she was dying. Okay. It's a temptation that we need to be aware of. And it's a temptation that if you don't accept that you can go there, you're not aware enough of it to guard against it. Well said. Okay. 
So all those people out there that are listening to this who going, oh, bullshit, you know, we don't want to do that. You either are not truly a sadist or you're not intelligent enough to be aware of what you're doing, of what your real demons are. Yeah. Either one is dangerous. That simple. So, you know, I'm strong about this because I have had to work with people who've been on the receiving end of really dangerous stuff to help them get over the trauma that they went through so that they could come back into a lifestyle that they really loved. Put a few back together myself, sir. I do understand that. I don't like having to fix other people's fuck ups. You're here. It's just that simple. And the people that I have met in the lifestyle who have been fucked up are legion. Mm. And it's always by somebody who thought they knew more about what they were doing than I did. I want to stop this video there because I want to come back in our next one to a conversation we were beginning to have last night in terms of people bottoms damage. Mm -hmm. Because I want to hear more of your thoughts about that. So viewers, we will be back shortly with number four.